Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Fium, which is one of the latest games from Freedom and Freeze, who you might know from such things as Power Grid, Fast Slots, the Fast Forward games. I'm sure it's a strange combination to first bring to mind, but hey, this is a game all about getting rid of crocodiles from Egypt, amongst other things, playing cards with a huge variety of effects. There is a huge deck of cards that we'll always go through every game but the order these cards come out in can make a massive difference to how the game plays out we start with a basic hand of cards we'll be buying more and more complex cards as the game goes on more more, more and more powerful cards in an attempt to earn reputation most reputation wins i'm playing the solo game here which is largely the same there are a couple of differences that i'll get into but you should be able to get a good idea of the game whether you're into solo or not before we get started there's a handheld and a static camera you can switch between those in the description based on what you'd prefer to watch really i would recommend you turn on the klingon subtitles because any mistakes i make will get corrected there and if you'd like to help me keep making playthroughs it's patreon.com forward slash slicker drips and any support there is massively appreciated thank you so much to everyone who already does that let's go then so let's just look at my hand to start with i have and everyone in the game has the same hand to start with three farmer cards a two roads card and a settlement card so the farmer card pretty much what we need to do first your options in a turn are play a card and perform its effects buy a card i have to turn you around a bit for this uh, this is the card market you can buy from these for the cost underneath and you can also see the future market some of the next cards that might come out because this isn't a standard shifting market you'll see there's numbers in the corner of all of the non-starting cards cards always get put out in the market in their numerical order so you'll only get to the juicy, powerful, high-numbered cards if you happen to draw a lot of high-numbered cards. See, at the moment, we've got access to 4, 8, 14, and 16 in the card market. But you can see some idea of cards that might come out soon, so you can get an idea of what you might need to progress towards. You start the solo game off with four money, so I could afford one of these cards, the Revenue or the Hermit card, so that could be my action. Your third action is Administration, and that's how you can earn some money and get your cards back, and flush a couple of cards out of the card display. I'll say in the multiplayer game, this is one of the changes, the game starts with these discount tokens on all of the cards in the card market that make them all one cheaper. They're removed when the card is bought, and then when someone does Administration, it's cards with these left on that get taken off and the cards that were already in the market get these discount tokens placed on them again. Discount tokens are not a part of the solo game at all. So I can see if I want to build roads or a settlement, I need some resources. Roads cost you basically the resources of the hexes that you are moving between. So to build a road here, I would have to pay either a wheat or a grape because that's what the two hexes are that the road would go between. You need to start from buildings and you want to link up settlements basically for points is what the point of the roads is. But to build roads and settlements, they need to be empty spaces. They can't have crocodiles in them. And all of the wheat and grape spaces start the game with crocodiles in. How do we remove them? Well, we want to harvest from those spaces. So I would play my farmer. I can put them anywhere to start with. Future farmers have to be adjacent to other ones. But I would get one resource of the type of the hex that I put them in. And the crocodile would be removed. And you get a dollar for removing a crocodile. So I think I'm going to start the game. Let's just let's just say there. And I'll say normally for static cameras, I do try and li lie down the meeples so you can get a better view of them. But in this game, there is a distinction between meeples that are standing up and lying down. So I'm going to have them stood up. So I remove a crocodile, which gets me one dollar. And it's a grape space, so I get myself some grapes as well. Not great against the purple tablecloth, but I think you'll be able to see. I'll put them there. Uh, so this now goes in my discard pile. And it's very important the order you play things into your discard pile, because when you do the administration action, you only take back the top three cards of your discard stack. You do get the opportunity to buy some more cards back, but it's going to get progressively more and more expensive. This is another difference from the multiplayer game. Multiplayer game, you get three cards back for free, and then it's a dollar for every additional card you want to draw, and you have to go in order. So if you've played a brilliant card and it's right at the bottom of your deck, it could be very expensive to get it back out. In the solo game, first three cards are free, and then it's one dollar for the next card, two dollars for the card after that, and so on and so on. More and more expensive the more cards you want to get back. Anyway, that's my action done. So I could look at buying something now. Now I do like the wheat and grape supplier for one card you can basically get double the resources. 
but you have to place them on a settlement space. It doesn't matter whether they're next to grapes or anything like that. It just matters that you put them on a settlement space. We do start the game with one settlement out there. Maybe they'd be better later once they're a bit cheaper. Now, the revenue card here only costs three, and whenever you play it, you get five money. Could be a great way of getting some early income going on. The hermit card here, you have to place a meeple out, a worker, so that it's not adjacent to any other workers. So it's a hermit, completely off on his own, and you earn two points for that. So that's just a, a straight-up way of earning two points. I think that could be a good thing to get started with. But so could revenue. I want both of the things. I'm going to buy revenue first. So my turn is buy a card. I'm going to pay the three money for that card. And this could affect how uh, how expensive the other cards are. Because the card gets immediately replenished from the big draw stack. We do have some end game cards down there as well. Uh, the cards get replenished and then put back in numerical order. So here I have made the Hermit a bit cheaper. Because card 106 has come out here. I won't get into what that does just yet. Uh, we'll, we'll see as uh, some of these more complicated cards uh, get made available to us. But that is going right at the end. The highest I'd drawn before that was 70. So I think the cards, is it 112 they go up to? The standard cards. So I've got my new card now, which I could play, so I could afford the Hermit. Why not do that? Yeah. So I'm going to play that and earn $5. And then I am just going to buy that Hermit card. So that's three gone again. But yeah, I'm, I've I think this is a good opportunity to play it as well, where there aren't many workers out on the board. New card comes out, it's uh, Escort 86. And that's going to have to slide all the way up there. We're not going to see that for a while, I think. So what have we got in the market now? We've got basically the <laughs> three of the basic resources. They're equivalent cards, the supplier cards. So this works just the same. You need to place a worker on a settlement space. You can only ever have one worker per space and you will earn two stone for doing that. The all-rounder here lets you either take back a card from your discard pile or take a resource of your choice, including fish that we haven't seen a way of getting off yet, or get a point. I don't think I'm going to go for that, though. I think... Now, I'm tempted to get a hermit. Yeah, I think I think let's, let's play the hermit. So that's uh, grab a worker from the general supply and just put them where nobody else is. And this is a chance to get some extra adjacency too. And I pop him there, completely off on his own, and I get myself my first two reputation points. So now do I keep playing cards? Do I try and buy something else? I've got $4, so I could buy another card. You want as few cards in your hand as possible because your income, when you do administration, is three minus the number of cards left in your hand. So at the moment I would get zero income, but I'll be able to retrieve all of my cards back for free. I think I can afford to put another one down. Now, I don't have the resources for a settlement. It's not really much point in me building roads yet. So I could do another farmer and start to get some resources towards getting another settlement, which gets you points and money and more settlements out for these kind of cards. So I'm going to play another farmer. And where would I like that farmer to be? Maybe it'd been better to do the two farmers straight away, I think, and maybe leave one farmer at the bottom of the discard pile. It has to be adjacent to something. I could get some stone, but I think I'm going to get some wheat because that will also get me a dollar for removing a crocodile. So I do have a bit more money to be able to buy a card now if I wanted one. Three, four, five. So... See, I don't really want to throw both of these away because when I administrate as well, I need to remove two of these cards from the game. You know what, I'm going to spend all five of my money. I haven't got stone yet. I'm going to spend all five money buying the stone supplier, and then I'm going to play it right away. So put a worker down on a settlement. There is only one settlement. Oh, before I play it right away, I should refresh the card, shouldn't I? Stone Mason, 102. Don't worry about workshops and things yet. That's not coming out for a while. So I get myself two stone. And so now I could play settlements... I've kind of put myself in a position, though, by playing that card straight away, put myself in a position where I can't get all my cards back. Maybe before Stone Supplier, this is why we wait and think about things, maybe before Stone Supplier I want to administrate. I'm not going to be able to get both farmers back, but I'm going to, I'm going to administrate now I've bought that card. So I take three cards back, I can't afford to buy any more. Then you remove uh, zero to two workers from the board and get a dollar for each of them. I think... 
I don't particularly mind about him being off on his own over there. I can get stone from my stone supplier. And let's remove... Let's remove this grape one. That would like a couple of dollars. Also, maybe I, I could afford to bring the card back because I get my money afterwards. Silly me. So I could... Oh, my mess is going to be on the static cam, isn't it? <laughs> Put my mess back. I could... It's only one. Yeah, I think I will bring back the other farmer as well, just so I've got access to all of my cards. I'm not going to say goodbye to it just yet. Okay, then. Uh, so next, I need to replace two cards of my choice in the current market. I think the all-rounder I'm not particularly bothered about. Expansion I'm not particularly bothered about. This lets you put an expansion cube on a workshop space. We haven't got workshops yet, and maybe it would be good to keep these in. I'm going to get rid of it. So two new cards come out to replace those. We've got 58 and 82. So 58 goes right here, the Fisher. And the senior supplier goes up there. Again, similar to the other suppliers that we've seen, it's just that it gets you three resources of your choice. So the Fisher works similarly to the, the farmer, has to go adjacent to another worker, but also needs to be adjacent to water. And you get three fish for doing that. Okay, I think now it's time to play. It's time to play the stone supplier, but I have to think about, do I want the stone supplier right at the bottom of the draw pile? Maybe I want to play the farmer first, get another, say, wheat. Even though the wheat supplier is very cheap, maybe I get another grape. So I get another grape, I get a dollar for getting rid of a crocodile. So I've got two dollars. Then I could play my revenue to keep some money coming in, and that's five more dollars, so a lot of cash now. I could play my stone supplier for the last resource I need to be able to start building some settlements. And then, let's build a settlement. So the settlement card, it's place a settlement down on any crocodile-free space, basically, that's ready to be developed. So I think I'm going to go for this grape space here. Yeah, because normally you would be thinking about it in a multiplayer game. I don't want to put it right next to a building because you get points for linking up uh, building sites to settlements and settlements to other settlements and things like that. But I kind of want to make things as easy as possible for myself. Now, this now is a developed space, and so farmers can't go on it. I need to pay my grape, wheat, and stone. And then I also get three points and three money. That put me on five points. Okay, maybe then we should start investing in a cheaper way of getting, say, meat. Wheat rather than meat. Just thinking the stone, it's annoying that the stone traders come out because that's basically better than my stone supplier. Get me three stone instead of two, but it would be a bit of a waste getting that now. I think since the wheat supply is so cheap, I'm going to buy the wheat supplier. So that's going to be three dollars into the pot. And papyrus comes out here, uh, which is 88. We don't need to worry about it yet. But having said that, there is an 80, the senior supplier is coming out. And as expensive as that is, Maybe, maybe it would be a good idea to buy. I could get lucky and that become a bit cheaper. I have got $7 right now. Just get three resources of your choice would make you really flexible. Able to get rid of maybe some other farmers and not worry about them again. So I think if I develop, if I did administration now, I would get rid of the grape supplier and the stone trader. Stone trader is too similar to my stone supplier. I kind of want to keep the Fisher out there. I just feel like the senior supply would be great if I could, if I have the chance of drawing a card that's more than 82 and sliding it down a bit. But at the same time, you want to play all of these cards and be as efficient as possible. Let's see. So I could just get this back, pay a dollar. I wouldn't even want that farmer back. I could just get the three back. Yeah, let's try that. I'm going to administrate, get my three. I don't earn any income because I've got so many cards left in my hand. I'm going to running out of space already, aren't I, for my hand cards. I'm going to get rid of the two that I said, and then let's bring two more in. We're looking for higher than 82. We got 30 and 40. Okay. Never mind, but we've got some different powers now. So we've got the marketer, which is, again, put a person down on a settlement, and this is one to three times, pay a dollar to get a resource of your choice. So very flexible, but it costs you every time you want to do that. Whereas the senior supplier would do that and not cost me any money. Small town is you put this, this, this uh, cylinder on top of a settlement 
It costs, same as a settlement, one of each resource, the wheat, grape, and stone. And you get five points and two money. And later on, towns will be important for certain things. Now, I do feel like clearing off a farmer again. So I'm going to just play a standard farmer card. Let's say... Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't remove people, did I? I could have removed both of these for two dollars, just to have two dollars. Uh, so the farmer, I'm going to put over here. So I'd like some wheat, and there's a crocodile there, basically. So I get another dollar for removing that crocodile. And basically, settlements have to be two spaces apart. So I could put another one there. It would be nice to have them linked up. I can afford a settlement now. Would I like to do another card in between? I could get rid of my last farmer, couldn't I, by having that on the bottom of the draw pile. Yeah, let's let's do another farmer. Let's well it has to be either a space without a crocodile or this one here for some grapes. So I'll get some grapes and I need a dollar for getting rid of the crocodile. So quite a stack of money here. I am gonna buy with seven. I'm gonna buy that senior supply because that's quite a nice high numbered card to come out fairly early. So I can just take my pick of which resources I want from that. It did cost seven, but I think it'll pay off. So 66, that goes right there. Wheat trader, same as the stone trader we saw, just better than my wheat supplier. Get me one more for just playing a card. Okay, so now we could think about cards I want to keep for the future. So I could play a settlement right now. I've got one each of the resources that I wanted. I might play the hermit just to get someone off in the middle of nowhere and getting me two points. One, two. Then let's let's play the settlement down because we can have a settlement going there. And so that's going to cost me one of each of those resources and get me three points and three money. So I've got seven money again. I've got my eye on the small town. I think that would be good to have out. Now I think I'd like to play the senior supplier. So put a supplier down on a settlement space and three resources of my choice. I want two, yeah, I want two wheat and a grape. And the question mark just means you can pick. It's why it's such a high, high numbered card. It's a powerful card because I'm going to build some roads. So I only get to build two roads. So I don't actually get to finish off my glorious plan, but I have to build out from settlements or building sites. So my first one is going to be from this building site to this settlement. So that costs me a grape because I haven't got a choice of what resource I pay there. And I have linked up a building site to a settlement. When a settlement is linked up directly to either a building site or another settlement, you get a point. So one point there. And then my other one, I'm going to spend wheat to put... Oh, I can't put one there because... Of the crocodile still in there. So maybe this wasn't such a great idea. What I can do is I could spend another grape for my other grape and put one going there. So again, putting roads in develops these spaces. Farmers can't go back in there. But I have kind of given up on the farmers. I do have a fair bit of money now. The cards I want to get back, it would cost me one to get the cards I want back. So I've got the wheat supplier, I've got revenue. I think I'm going to buy the small town card. I'm not going to be able to play it just yet. Maybe I should wait then, because I could get a bit cheaper, couldn't it? There's no reason to just buy it right now. I could play revenue, because it would earn me five and cost me two to get the hermit back. Yeah, it would be a profit, wouldn't it? I don't think I'll play the wheat supplier back yet. So, we need to get income. Three minus the number of cards in my hand. I've only got one card in my hand, so that's two money. Take back some meeples. I could, couldn't I? I'm going to take back, let's say, definitely the one off the settlement, so that's free again. And maybe this one, because I, I want to be adjacent over here somehow. I'm going to take those off and get a dollar for each. And then I get the three cards from the top of my discard pile back first. Put my money somewhere else. Out of the way of my cards. Take those out of there. And then... I want to pay one to bring the settlement back for sure. I don't want to stop losing the ability to get settlements. And then let's pay two to get the hermit back. I like the hermit. And I've still got 13 money left. I'm going to get rid of the marketer 
don't think the market is very good for me right now. And the wheat trader, I think. And let's see what we get out here. We've drawn 90 and 60. Oh, that's good. So the card I wanted is cheaper now. So 60 is the gem searchers. I like the gem searchers. Maybe not as good in solo. Uh, because what the gem searchers let you do is you've got two options. Either lay down one to five meeples at a cost of one money each. Or remove all of the lying down meeples and earn three money each for them lying down. So you can potentially make a ton of profit. There is, I think there's only a couple of other cards that concern the lying down meeples. Yeah, but yeah, you can you can make a ton of money that way. You do have to play the card twice to get that from it. But I'm just thinking in a solo game, and especially with me getting rid of the farmers and stuff, probably going to be fewer workers out there to make the most out of that. Now, Tax Collector is place a worker on a workshop space and earn some money. But uh, yeah, we, we haven't had the ability to build workshops yet, so that's not great. So I, I did want to buy Small Town, didn't I? So I'll do that first while I'm thinking about it. So that's going to be $3. New card comes out, and we've got the Pharaoh. Pharaoh uh, trots... Oh, I've got things in the wrong order, haven't I? 90 should go over here, so let's look. Things need to slide down anyway, so we will look at some new cards. So we've got Escort. This is take a person from a settlement and move them to one to three directly connected settlements that can't have other workers on, because you can only ever have one worker on a space. And depending on how many settlements you manage to move them to, uh, you get money. Uh, you spend money to get points. So, two money for if, if you just manage to get them to the next settlement along, it costs you two money for four points. If you manage to get them to two settlements, four money for five points. Three settlements, six money for six points. So, oh, and uh, Papyrus is copy the action of the top card of your discard pile. So, good things. Hmm. I don't think I'm particularly enthused about getting them yet. I'm going to use my stone supplier. Do I want that down first? Maybe we'll think about not bringing cards like revenue back. Perhaps. Because cards, you know, outlive their usefulness. Maybe Hermit isn't going to be as great. We could put... Let's think about whether we're going to get him back later. I could put Hermit, say, down here so it's adjacent to a load of grape spaces and a load of crocs, too. If I, but I haven't really got farmers for that to matter. So, Hermit, you have to put him on an undeveloped space, that's why it's got a crocodile on the card. You remove the crocodile and get a money. I've realised it's a bad idea getting rid of all of the farmers, isn't it? Because they're removing crocodiles. Because you can't build in the spaces with crocodiles. So maybe I do need to get some at least one back. They don't give you that many resources, but there's other benefits to having them. So that was my Hermit, two points for that. Then I could do two roads. Oh yeah, two roads. I've got the wheat that I need. I'm going to let's grab two roads. So I'm going to go from here. Am I going to go from here? Because I wanted to link this directly. I wanted to link these to each other and, and directly to the building site. Because then you get a point each time for those connections. Maybe I'm not going to do two roads just yet. You know what, I don't particularly want fish, but I'm going to buy the fisherman because that'll be a way of me. I'm going to play him straight away. I could put him there because, oh, it has to be next to a existing worker though, doesn't it? I'd like him to be there so that he could get rid of that crocodile for me. Could still start working on the other side. Gets me a dollar, gets me a fish. Oh, no, it's three fish, isn't it? Loads of resources. So when I start being able to pay anything, oh, I need to replace the fisher. Oh, straight there. The senior farmer. I'm going to buy. There we go. That solves some of my problems, I think. Three money for him. And 92. Okay, the tax collector comes down that we've spoken about. Well, we haven't really, but we haven't got workshops, so it doesn't matter. Five roads. Same as your two roads card, but you can build five roads. Did I get the three points for building my two roads? It'll be in the subtitles. I must have. So the senior farmer is just twice as powerful as a normal farmer. Works in the same way. You just get two of the resource. I'm going to... Now, adjacency is working against me again here, isn't it? It could help me link up to, say, this building site, though. I'm going to do a senior farmer over here. Crocodile is gone, so that means a money. And I need two wheat for doing that. I do already have two wheat. 
And then let's start thinking about the stone supplier could get me a couple of stone. Just needs to go on a settlement. I could have done it the other way around, couldn't I? I could have done him first and then done adjacent from him. This will still work out, I think. We could do two roads now because the two roads could go here and here. So two wheat. I've got four wheat, so that's fine. I get three points for the action. And I've just linked up a settlement to a building site. So that's one more point for the first time. It's only when they're linked up for the first time. Discord pal's looking big. It's already going to cost me three to get back all my non-farmers. I do have seven money. I think we should bring them back. So I don't get any income. I've still got loads of cards in my hand. I get... Oh, bring some workers back. Hmm. Not particularly bothered about doing that. Maybe the stone one. Oh, and get him off the settlement. So that's free again. Two more cash. And then pay... One, two, three to have those back. I think that'd be okay. I don't want the gem searchers. And I don't think I'm going to have the escort. So let's see what we're getting. We're getting a farm. Here we go. Here's how we get workshops down. And the grape trader. So grape trader would be good. It's the resource I haven't got a supplier of. So the tra grape trader straight up to getting three grapes in one go. Farm is put a workshop down on... A developed wheat space, so it's got a road going into it. Cost you a grape and a stone, and will get you three points and three wheat. And there are cards later on that you've seen that concern themselves with workshops. So the tax collector is put a worker down on any workshop, and you get a money for every workshop on the board, and for every town on the board. So I think I'm going to start saying goodbye to some of these cards. I'm going to play revenue for probably the last time to get me five money. And I think I'm also, what else did I want to get rid of? Maybe Fisher was a bad idea to get. We're gonna play the Hermit. I don't know if the Hermit's gonna be coming back. Just, let's put the Hermit there where I want this crocodile removing from and then we can maybe work from there. So that gets me two points and a money for removing another crocodile. I'm gonna play the Senior Farmer, I don't know if if the senior farmer's going to come back that quickly, because I want the grape trader instead. Uh, the senior farmer is going to go over, let's say, here, because we could put another settlement over here. That's two grapes and a dollar for getting rid of another crocodile, because now we can... Do I want the fisher keeping? It'd be good when I can spend anything. I might want to farm coming soon yeah I'm gonna uh, I don't want it to go that low down in my discard parlor do I I'm gonna build a settlement just there are other ways of building settlements just haven't come out yet well, there's a card that uh, lets you build one for just two different resources I believe get another settlement out where I said over there these can all link up all nice then that gets me three money and three points. 22 now. And I've also got the resources to do a small town. Just one of each of those. Now, a small town is still a settlement for all those purposes. Just when something specifically concerns the town, only that's a town. So I've made that a town. That gets me five points and two more cash. I'm 27 now. I'm going to play Fisher to keep clearing out some of these spaces and get more workers out onto the board. Maybe I should have kept gem suppliers. Put them out there, buy the water. Gets rid of a croc, so that's one more cash. And three more fish. And that's all the resources I have right now. Now, I've still got four cards left in front of me. All of these suppliers. Maybe I don't need, like, the stone and the wheat supplier. I've got a senior supplier. So maybe I don't need to buy the grape trader because I've got this senior supplier. I could just say three grapes. So I was thinking of getting the grape trader. I'm going to play the senior supplier. So a worker down on a settlement. And I'm going to grab myself. Which roads would I like to build next? Now roads, by the way, can only branch off on settlements and building sites. They can't just branch off in the middle of nowhere. So I would like... So I've got three resources to choose from, haven't I? 
a grape would do that road, and then maybe just three grapes. Yeah, we should do three grapes. And then I'm going to play two roads. I'm going to spend two of those grapes to do two grape roads. So we could do one there. Settlement's been connected up to another settlement for the first time. So that's a point. Actually, each of those settlements has been connected to a settlement for the first time, hasn't it? And then the next one could be... Oh, actually, this, may, this maybe was, was not a great idea because you can't, you can't branch off, as I've just said. You could still connect it to the building site and stuff. Okay, it can't branch off in here. It can branch off outwardly. Anyway, so that's uh, three more points for doing the build roads action too. And then I think it's time to administrate. So I've got two cards in hand, which is going to give me one more income. Then take some workers back. I think I'd like to take them off settlements. And that'll be two more cash. I don't need to worry about this discard pile, do I? Although I'm not uh, keeping my income card. I don't think I'm going to bring that back. So then it's top three cards. So senior supplier I want to keep. The roads I want to keep. Mm, fish is kind of useful still. That was my three cards. So it's costing me... So I definitely want small town back. That's one. Settlements. Yeah, I don't want to lose my only way of getting settlements. Do I want the senior farmer back? To keep clearing off crocodiles, maybe I do. Or maybe you just use the hermit and get points. That's three to get the senior farmer back. Do I want the hermit back for four money? I think I do. Yeah. I was going to get keep him away. I'm not going to get the revenue back, though. I'm going to leave that there. I need to get rid of two cards. Now, I want to keep the farm out there. I don't want the grape trader. And I think I'm going to get rid of papyrus, you know? So, unfortunately, I've made the farm more... I should have bought the farm earlier. I've made it more expensive. But it's, it's cancelled itself out because I did earn money. It depends. Does it get more expensive? Yes, it does. So, we've got now the gardener, which is put down a worker next to some water. doesn't have to be next to another worker. And get a flower. Flower is basically a wild resource. Some things want you to spend flowers specifically, but generally they're a wild resource. Supplier, put a guy in a settlement, get two resources of your choice. Right, I think, as a truck, you might be able to hear it, as a truck reverses in the background, <laughs> it's a good time to end part one here. I'm going to go all the way through to the rest of the game. I've probably gone through a decent amount of it so far. I'm not sure how long's left. You'll see in the timings of the videos, won't you? I'm going to go all the way through to the end. So if you want to see how this turns out and what I can manage to score, join me for part two. It'll be linked in the description or on the screen very shortly. If you'd like to just know what I think about Fiam, that will also be linked. Thank you very much for watching, though, and I'll see you wherever you end up. Bye, everyone. Thank you.